Do you want to do it? I want to do it. It's all yours. This is Ham Radio Now, episode number... No, no, no. No. Calling a foul. <laughs> this is Ham Radio Now. At some point, now. you're going to be able to do this the all by yourself, important. and then you can yes, do it however you want. But as long as I'm sitting here, it's got to okay, be... Okay, okay, all right. All right, ready? Go. I got the board in the back. Okay. Somebody has to go beep. Okay. This is Ham Radio Now, the most important ham radio show on the internet. Okay, and now I do this thing. I do that thing. Whoosh. And I put up the title, which has, an, you know. Ham Radio Now, episode number 380, Board of Directors. And now you're really out of sync. I don't know what, what's this happened. Be, I don't know. Maybe it's the title. It shouldn't be, though. No, because it's all on your side. It's true. Uh, so um, there's a little problem with that title. What's wrong with the title? It's got a. It's got a text joke in it that yeah, does not translate to the audio audience. Yeah, nobody can hear that on the audio audience. Yeah. Well, it's the way we spelled board. B-O-R-E-D. Board is in <laughs> board of directors. That's funny, Gary. Yeah. I'm almost surprised nobody else has done that. But I did a Google search, and I mean, the, the term has come up in the past in regards to ARL board of directors. But it has? It's, it's been... A decade or more. Okay, good. So, no, no some take down notice club, for us. News, club newsletters and stuff. Got it. But we we'll talk about board. Maybe, and then we, I think it was their own board, not ARLs. I think their own board. They would say, uh, the search I did was ARL, board, B O R E D, of directors. And club newsletters came up from the 80s. And they had the word ARL in them. But. Right. That wasn't what they were referring to. They were, you know, it's like, come be bored with us at our board of directors meeting. Oh, uh, God. They were trying to increase participation and membership. Yeah. So, um, just the opposite of where we're going. Here's me, Gary Pierce, KN4AQ. And so far, me. still somewhat hosting. Sorry, I'm working on it. And there's me, David Goldenberg, W0DHG, still co host for now. And Almost putting that in parentheses. And finally, so. there's Arvin. And there's Arvin. If you like what we're doing and you want to support us, please go join us and visit us at www.hamradionow.tv and find Arvin and click the pig. There's mine. There's mine. There's Where's mine? I'm on the wrong side. Nope. He's. I can point at yours. Jeez, I'm totally confused. <laughs> Arvin's over there. He's up there. I moved him. That's why it's the wrong hand. Yep. The Admiral of Ar. Our Admiral of Arvin's Army. I like the alliteration, but armies don't have admirals. Right. So, He's the chief pig. Yeah. So uh, a a show ago, I think I think the last show, um, it drew an immediate complaint because we took a couple of minutes to get to the show material. And somebody and somebody you know on YouTube or someplace, one of those you know a wag. Someone that, you know, they, they like to do the drive-by criticism was, uh, get to the point already. Right. That being the case, no. <laughs> yeah, you want to talk about lunch? Yeah, I'm going to do something else here. Um, good, good deal. You know, here in uh, North Carolina, <clears throat> we're, looking. We're, having, we're having winter. <laughs> and so, Is that all you got? Uh, oh, no, that was just getting started. Yeah. And now this is what the uh, oh, that looks awesome. The cul-de-sac in front of the house looks like. That's the actually the neighbor's house across the cul-de-sac. This is ours. Right. Notice that for those of you in the audio audience, this is particularly boring. But uh, he has the southern exposure, so his driveway is uh, already clear, and I have shoveled this driveway mine three times. Kind of clear. Yeah, kind of. It's mostly. We have four-wheel drive cars. We can get in and out just fine. But it's, you know, for the UPS guy. It looks like mostly the walk. Or is that the driveway? Uh, that's shop? the driveway. We don't have a sidewalk. Got it. They got it. built the house wrong. Yeah. This is just out in the woods. This is actually where we had the feral cats are the, and a couple of uh, containers for the, for the feral cats to uh, live in. And... Um, are they in there? As I, I can see heads sticking out. No, they're they're not in there right now. In fact, I don't think they've been in there yet. Uh, this this particular weather, but it just was a pretty picture. And then this is what you get when you have 
winter in North Carolina, you get a cat who's willing to climb into your jacket. Yeah. And just sit there. A long time ago. Yeah. So, so that is for the guy that thinks that we take too long to get to the show. Yep. And guess what? I'm wearing short sleeves. <laughs> so, um, but you have had uh, California brand weather up the coast from you. We've been seeing it on the national news, all these mudslides and stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pretty bad mudslides. I mean, you had the fires, and I guess the fires lead to the mudslides. Well, when you have fires and then a lot of rain, then you get mudslides. On the on the day, uh, the day before the mudslides, we had um, almost three inches here. I have a you know nice rain gauge outside, and um, we had. Oh, wait, I got to turn this off because somebody's trying to lie at me. Um, we had, uh, 2.87 or something like that inches of rain in one day, which was, um, a lot for here and thought I had to drain some water out of the pool, but then it stopped and we're all good. <laughs> That's a lot of rain. And I know up, up North, they were talking about like twice that where they were talking about, they got two inches of rain in something like 20 minutes. And, and that was part of the reason why they, they did all the evacuation warnings. Because I think the old the old rules were like if they get an inch of rain in an hour is when they start doing that. And they were so overwhelmed with rain that they had to do that. And I know ham radio played a part, but I haven't seen any of the news of exactly what part they played. I was going to ask about that, but first I was going to say you've got a pool. Yeah, we have a pool <laughs> in Southern California. Everybody has a pool. Yeah, but we all do. We don't. We don't use it a ton. Movie stars, but, swimming pools. Yeah, most of the, the cement uh, pond. Most of the time, most of the year here, it's too cold. And then a part of the time of the year, it's too hot. Because when it gets to, you know, 112 here every day, then then it's like hot tub for 100 because the pool will be like 100 degrees, 101. And nobody wants to get in that. It's not, it's not refreshing. It's like bathtub. Hmm. So you have a pool so that you don't have so much grass to mow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. That kids like to use it. And, you know, I get in there every once in a while. My wife, not so much anymore. All right. Shall we get on to the topic at hand? Two and a half good months of um, pool here. Yeah, what was that topic, Gary? We've got to go back to the title. No, we don't. I can I can do that. You challenge me. Ta-da. Episode number 380, Board of Directors. So this supposed weekend. With that, this, right? hmm? I'm supposed to yawn with that, right? Yeah. Oh. <sighs> Right. Um, so this weekend is the RRL board of directors meeting. This is what we've been leading up to. This is the big, you know, what's, what we've been, what we've all been waiting for. So, uh, it's, you know, going to be streaming online and you're going to watch it on YouTube and Roku's and stuff. Um, audio streaming for those of you that don't have the video. Really? Watch every scintillating moment of it. Really? No. No. Not. No. I've been Are you kidding? Stuff. Yeah. Um, no, I'm, audio not, I'm not kidding. Hold on. I, the video. Are you turning me up? No. I, Facebook? I No, I tried to check the room to see if there was comments because I haven't been looking at that. And I clicked the thing and pulled it up to full screen and then the audio happened. Sorry. Hmm. Okay. So back to the awesome streaming YouTube video of the board of directors <laughs> meeting that's happening. It's not. In just hours. Yeah. Well, we will actually, we'll talk about that, uh, down the road a little bit, um, that I, uh, spent almost all day yesterday preparing notes for this show. I never do that, but there was a lot of stuff out there. So we actually collaborated on, uh, Google docs to some extent, yeah, I did a little bit so. between now. So, so this is going to be really well organized mm -hmm. for a change. There's a cat. That's Washi, yeah, the blind tuxedo cat. And um, seriously, it's like Washi was looking for something there. Yeah. Um, so so uh, this is the board of directors. You know, we've been leading up to this for low these many weeks, yep. um, and it is here, and they're getting started tomorrow. They've had some pre-meeting conferences and stuff, ironing things out. Uh, and in a previous show, I was, um, kidding sort of 
when I suggested perhaps with all of this advanced material that we were getting, that maybe we were getting punked because, you know, we had, had these things that were leaked out and, and we weren't supposed to know about them, these proposals. And I was thinking, yeah, maybe somebody just kind of stuck those things out there and in hopes that we pundits and bloggers and, you know, rich over at CQ would pick them up and the, the ham community would get all spun up and bent out of shape and their underwear and a wad. And that's exactly what happened. It sure we got, did. We got punked. Well, sort well, of. Sort of. Sort of. We, okay, we so not really. <laughs> we definitely did get all riled up, though. Yeah. So and lots of. It, it turns out that that the um, the proposals that we had been talking about for since mm, early this month, late December, and we started with the code of conduct, and then this other stuff came out. Uh, they were actually have been being developed mostly by the ARL executive committee since last summer, and then a director because they were supposed to be closely held leaked them out. We don't know who. Um, and, uh, and we all looked at them and, and they said all kinds of terrible things in them. And, um, the ham community got as spun up as the ham community gets. And then they got revised a couple weeks ago. Some of the complaints were addressed, not all of them. Some of the things that, that we and everybody else is not all that happy about have been yanked back. So yeah, we weren't exactly punked, but it was sort of sort of like, ha ha, I told you. <laughs> yep. And uh -huh. I like to think we made a difference and caused some of that. Yeah. So the next thing I made a note here on is uh to Ham's care. I mean this is ARL stuff. De Ham's care, board of directors, policy wonky, stuff like that. Uh, I mean, it certainly got lots of folks making comments on QRZ.com, but almost anything can. Lots of the shows that we have done get hundreds of comments from from people. Mm -hmm. And by the by, comment number 25 or so, they've got nothing to do with the show anymore. Yeah, they've gone off and they, done their own show. Yeah, they spin out of control. Yeah. Or there's a couple of guys just kind of playing tennis back and forth. I like so, it this way. I like it that way. I like it this way. You listen on the air. Nobody's talking about this. There's rag chewing. There's contests. There's DX. The Bove crew is on their way. Working around icebergs and stuff. Um, Not yet. They just they just left a couple hours ago. Oh really? I, I thought. Yep. I thought they they're left. actually on. They're actually on their way. On their way. They're okay. not training anymore. They're they're on the on the sea. Yes, absolutely. That was. Um, I don't know, t maybe 9.30 or 10 o'clock this morning, they were announcing that they were loading up the ship and going off to sea. Hmm. Okay, well, cool. Um, so all this stuff is not a big, st it's not a big story, except among a relatively small group of hams who like this sort of thing. And, and, you know, maybe that's why I'm just kind of meandering my way, tiptoeing into it. It's, it's so that you and I can be more entertaining <laughs> <laughs> and and keep an audience now obviously we don't keep an audience by just bantering and stuff um except for the folks that like to hear us just banter you now the folks that want us to get to the point well they're gone long gone. Yeah, we're not getting there they should never have been here in the first place they should know right, by now exactly. <laughs> exactly what did they think yep uh but there there are um some hams that think this is the big story you know i have usually never been one of the uh it's um i'm not one of those guys that follows the board of directors minutes when they come out goes through them line by line parsing them for grains of information and reading between the lines because they're sanitized for your protection um whose protection <laughs> someone's okay uh, and I didn't even the, I didn't even get the names have been redacted to protect the innocent. Right, exactly. Although I have signed up uh, since then. You know, it's easy to do. Oh, signed up to get to get, to the, get the, uh, the minutes to, sent well, to you. To get the, yeah, the to get the whatever it is that they're willing to share. Yeah. That was easy. Um 
Yeah, I, I, I mean, I get the uh, the bulletins and stuff, and I don't even remember seeing that as as a member when you can you can click click the boxes to tell them what you want to show up on your email. At the very bottom, there's one. Okay. That, that you can have that has um. And I don't remember exactly what it's called or anything like that, but it had to do and, with And they put them on the website. They're, they're not yeah. hard to get. It's just, are they are they worth getting? And I, and I've known hams over the course of my career that um, whenever they come out, they, you know, they're going through them with a magnifying glass, fine tooth comb, looking to see what, you know, what they can get out of them. Never, I've never been that interested. It's mostly kind of boring. Mostly been, you guys take care of it you know, a big proposal about spectrum or privileges or something. If you want to, you know, bring up incentive licensing again, let me know. <laughs> then I'll pay attention. <clears throat> so, um, here we are paying attention. A bunch of other people are paying attention. Like Again, most people out there not, but a bunch are. So maybe this is, maybe this is a story. Some of the other folks out there in ham media land are actually paying attention to this, not just us. Uh, of course, you know, Dan, KB6NU, his blog, yep. um, he's been paying attention to it actually longer than we have. And um, and Rich Moses and at CQ have put out a bunch of news bulletins about it and, uh, and a couple of white papers. So they've been paying attention to it. Um. Lennox and the Ham Shack, the, uh, that, that show, they, they did uh, episode 201. They call it, It's Alive. I think that they're saying that because they've been on hiatus for a few months, so they're back. Yep. So their first show back after the, the hiatus, uh, um, I guess I'll give them a plug. They have revised the show some. Um, they, I guess they used to do... You know, Russ, the guy that, that runs it, I guess he they recorded it and he would laboriously edit and take the ums and breaths and stuff out and, and long pregnant pauses and what they're trying to figure out what they're doing. <clears throat> take all that stuff out and clean it up. And so so Russ is, has uh, been listening to me. And I say, don't do all that stuff. Just put it all out there. Put it out there. Put it out there. I didn't get to, li- didn't get to listen. Are they still doing a recipe? Well, yeah, um, they they're going to do um, instead of one long show, they're going to do a, a three somewhat shorter shows with um, different focus. So some will be a lot of news and stuff, and some will be goofing around. Um, go listen to their episode two hundred one, and they'll yep. explain it all to you. And at about fifteen thirty into that, um, they'll do their news report. And their news report will uh, will re- refer to it. Okay. So, so I'm just pointing out that that it some of the other shows are doing it. I haven't surveyed every possible show to see who else is doing it, but <clears throat> but they did. Um, and I'd also like to notice to note that um, our buddy Bill um, NE4RD in, in later on in that broadcast was talking about the Parity Act, and he made the same mistake that I did. And if, if I hadn't made this mistake at some point in my history, I wouldn't be throwing him under the bus <laughs> and saying that he did it. But but I did this uh, two years ago, um, back when it was uh, HB 1301, and uh, it was finishing up the first year of 1301, and I was thinking, oh, <laughs> I lost David. David's t- David got so bored with me doing the show that he disappeared. Let's see. The last time this happened, he had an internet outage. So we'll see if we get him back in a moment. Um, so Bill, um, I, I had, uh, thought after the first year it, it had not been passed. So that it died. And, and then I was informed that no congressional sessions are two years. You know, our congressmen go two years. And, uh, see if we can get David back here. Um, and their, and their congressional session goes two years. What happened to you? Skype crash. (coughs) Ooh, just a big Skype crash. I've not had that happen in some time, but Skype told me that it wasn't happy and it was restarting. Oh, okay. You're (sighs) back. 
I'm back. So I was explaining that I had screwed up and thought that um, back in HR 1301 days, congressional session was one year, and it's not, it's two years, and, and they have one more year to go. It still, still didn't make it. But where we are now with um, the Parity Act, House Bill 555, and the companion bill in the Senate, I can never remember what that is. It still passed early last year in the House, so it's still live. It's still sitting in the Senate. Apparently, the same senator. Um, Norris in Florida. Uh, okay, yeah, that's right. He's not, he, yeah, okay, and um, is holding it up. Good. And let him keep holding it up. Let it die. <laughs> well, they're, that's <laughs> that's sort of the, one of the background things in this uh, My ARL Voice that you know, most of, most of what they're talking about is process stuff. It's governance, but that is maybe the issue that this all sort of began because of. But we'll we'll get there. So anyway, well, I and I don't want a conspiracy theory on this whole um, on the whole um, Senate Act thing. But um, I wonder why the HOAs aren't lobbying on our behalf to get this thing passed. Um, based on based on the changes, well, and the, the people could watch the other show that we did about this. <laughs> and I would have to think about that a little bit. I mean, which would they prefer? Would they prefer that nothing happen, or would they prefer that five fifty five get passed? I don't know. I think I think the way that I understood it, and, and based on talking to um, the guys that we talked to, that the HOA wrote probably wrote most of this, and we just kind of said, okay, we'll sign that. And, you know, a reasonable accommodation could be the 9-inch for my six, 440. 6-inch UHF ground I'm not gonna ever that right. I'm going <laughs> to write that down on my note sheet here. The 6-inch, you know, steel whip for my 440. And, well, um, your 9-inch whip is, well, actually, it's more like 12 inches. That would be 12, a 220. 220, yeah. yeah. Okay, so. So, so 19 yeah. inches for 2 meters, 12 inches for 220, right. 6 inches for 70 centimeters. I'm going to lose my my. License. <laughs> Good. We're, but anyways, we're not going to lose it entirely. We're just going to bust you back to tech. That's fine. So, um, yeah, I would think that if I were on that side of the negotiating table, that I would be like ramming this thing home, trying to get it passed because. Well, that, that would, I, I guess, you know, considering what a lot of the hams are saying is that the, the, this just hands everything over to them, then they would be lobbying yeah. to get it passed, as you're saying, and they're not. Exactly. So maybe yeah, it is a little of, bit more balanced, fair and balanced than not buying it. Okay, but maybe. All right, Newsline did um, did the report uh, on um, not the Parity Act. No, not the, the Parity Act. The board of directors. On the board thing. of directors meeting. Yeah, they did Back it on. last week. Yep. Um, I will I will call out because I watched for this W five KUB the amateur radio roundtable. Did not do anything on it. They had really nice shack picks, though. They did. <laughs> Katie was showing those, so. Yeah. Um, and um, and Ham Nation did it as part of Newsline. Left yep. last night, left over from previous week's Newsline. And, and that brings me to my first um, little piece of video thing. We'll just, let's check out their story. That's, that's a interesting, interesting shot I've got going there. It's Don halfway dissolved from when he sits at the uh, at the anchor desk, just talking to people on the show, and then they go to the recorded newsline. He's in the same place, but he's wearing something different, so he's halfway dissolved here. Oh no! From Amateur Radio Newsline Report Number Two Thousand Ninety Eight. These are the Ham Nation headlines for Wednesday, January Seventeenth, Two Thousand Eighteen. The AWRL is facing some major public challenges from the U.S. amateur community regarding its actions, bylaws, and policies. A group known as My AWRL Voice is advocating change in the league's lobbying efforts, governance procedures, and code of conduct through a steering committee comprising some of the league's own past vice directors, life members, and Maxim Society members. The group's website urges amateurs to press the league to take action at its January 19th board meeting to ensure more transparency. AWRL leadership has also been embattled in an escalating war of words with a vocal call 
coalition in California over the league's code of conduct. The Northern California Contest Club, an ARRL affiliate, claimed that the code stifled communications in league matters and prompted the controversial public censure of a division director in November. The league will not publicly discuss the specifics of the censure. However, its leadership continues to stand by the code as well as its more recent official actions. On January 6th, ARRL Hudson Division Director Mike Lysenko, N2YBB, addressed those issues in very general terms when he gave a keynote speech at Ham Radio University on Long Island, New York. Calling the censure a personnel matter not open to the public by the league, he nonetheless reaffirmed both the need for the code and the content of the code and supported the league's actions. For Amateur Radio Newsline, I'm Paul Brown, WD9GCO. Okay, so there's their story. And um, and that was kind of like a twofer because you got not only the news line and the Ham Nation because they just replayed the news line, right? Well, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, that's what they do. Yeah. They're, they're just, they're doing the news line, but they add some video to it. Sure. So. Actually, that's, yep. Uh, and, and then they went on to a 30-minute panel discussion about the nuances of this activity. I'm waiting for you to react. That. I didn't get that far because I wasn't feeling good. They I don't didn't. think they, they did I don't think they did, did they? No. Okay, that's what I thought. Didn't, didn't, uh, somewhere up front in the program, I forget if it was Gordon. I think it was Gordon that, that said he was looking forward to, to hearing about it. Um, and I was, I was kind of expecting to, to hear them at least talk about it a little bit, but they didn't. I missed that, that part, too. That was it. I watched all the way through um, tail end, and uh, you know, maybe somebody would bring it up in Amanda's section out of the chat room, but nobody did. But Amanda did something that impressed me a lot. That There was... Um, she wanted somebody, I think at DX Engineering, to fill in for her when she was going to get some surgery. She's going to get some surgery uh, in the next couple of weeks, and she and she was looking for somebody to fill in. And she mentioned the name of the woman, and I think it was at DX Engineering, and said, and and she said she wouldn't do it. So I'm throwing you under the bus. Go, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> that is not very Ham Nation like. That's yeah. something we would do. Not something to expect over there. Okay, so um, Ham Nation stuck it on Newsline. Uh, nobody else that I know of, but I might have missed somebody. Dan has put it on his blog, CQ. CQ uh, put a blog post up about the proposed revisions um, that, again, have pulled back some of the things that were in the original proposal that had people pretty exercised about mm -hmm. uh there's still still things that that um we can find to complain about but we'll talk about that in a bit um cq has had strong criticism of the initial proposals and of the code of conduct but their current editorial is pretty bland you can find it on on their website um it's not an editorial in the magazine it's uh it's in their news section so cq-amateur-radio.com um, and in a, uh, uh, a big surprise to me, um, qrz.com founder, Fred Lloyd, a seven BQ posted a rare editorial in this, uh, uh, in qrz.com in their news section. Um, and uh, he actually offered some proposals. He thinks that, uh, the officers, the vice president presidents should be elected directly from we, the membership and thought that could be handled online. Mm -hmm. um, he would like to see a sunshine rule on documents so that any member can see any document except for the private personnel matters. I guess we can't now, I guess. I've never asked for one. <clears throat> um, I know some people that have, though, and have been denied, so sorry, you can't see that. And he would like to see um, open meetings, uh, meetings open to any member, and broadcast the audio and the video. I'll talk more about broadcasting the audio and video a little bit later on. I got a section I want to talk about that. You, I'm a member, a life member, been a life member since 74. I can't go. Nope, and, I can't go. My vice director can't go unless they invite him. 
uh, what, was is is that the case, or was that something they were proposing? Was I think that was one of the pieces I of think, the proposal. Uh, I, I don't know if that went in on the code of conduct, or there's an adjustment. It wasn't in the code of conduct at all. It would have been okay. in the bylaws or the, the bylaws. Okay, articles of association. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't remember if that was newly introduced. No, I think I think that the the, uh, the vice directors have been able to go uh, to every meeting. They just have to play dumb. Got it. Yeah, you know, sit down, shut up. Can't vote. Can't talk. Can't participate in the so discussions. The, it, the adjustment is that they can only go on on invitation. I think that I think that was yeah, it. Yeah, and I don't I don't remember unless that was in um, Lashenko's part. I didn't I didn't read that when I read through this stuff this morning. Okay, so. Um, it did hit the news. I'm going to say not a big thing out there in Ham Radio Land. I haven't been to a club meeting um, or even a club dinner or function since most of this has been stirred up. I was at a club dinner in December, and no one else was familiar with what was going on, and I brought it up. And at that time, we were just talking about the code of conduct. And the four or five people around me, usually if, if I'm – bringing up something and almost nobody ever does. And, you know, I'll have the attention of the guy sitting across the table from me and maybe somebody else. And there are six people at this table and suddenly everybody's looking at me saying, what, what are you talking about? So I got to explain it to everybody. Then they seemed it came, interested. It came up in our, um, our December Aries meeting. And, um, you know, there were people in the room that were in Visalia when the, and six AA thing happened. Yeah, so it's out it, in your territory. Yeah, and so it was it was conversation and and spilled over to the parking lot for a good half an hour, forty minutes. I missed a uh, January meeting because I was that's when the flu started for me. Um, but I don't think it came up. So at that club meeting uh, or the areas meeting, um, what? How are people reacting? Uh, a lot of people didn't know. So it goes back to our. <laughs> You know, our, our first thing is people people either don't know or don't care. A lot of people didn't know. Um, there were a number of people in the room, again, like I said, that, um, you know, had been in the room in Visalia. There's a couple of the people there that follow our show, so they knew what we had been talking about from the from the stuff that we did early on about this. And um, it it was, people are annoyed. People were, were, you know, angry and frustrated and wanting to know what to do. And that's part of what spilled over into the parking lot. Did you get anybody who piped up and said, uh, the ARL is the savior of amateur radio and, and we need to support them no matter what. Yeah. You know who that was? Was it you? It was me. (laughs) And, and, you know, here in mostly it was, it was me in terms of, look, I, I, I'm not happy with what's going on, but on the other hand, I think they do good things. And so I'm not going to pull my membership, um, but I do want change. And so, so you were and getting actually, from, I was from, mostly I told people if you if you weren't a member, you should join so that you could back the change. And if you are a member, you should push for the change. But but quitting quitting doesn't accomplish anything. So you, so you were seeing some more of that stuff we were kidding about at the end of the last show where I was going, burn it down. Yeah. Well and there were there was some of that. There wasn't a whole lot of they're awesome. They're great. And, and they do tons of super things. And it was me. And, you know, I know, I know probably people in the audience are thinking, what? Cause you guys haven't been saying that, but Just, we actually we have, right? Yeah. That's been get, my position. Get consistent. You're confusing us. No, but I think that's been my, that's been my, <clears throat> my position has been, yes, they do good things and yes, they need to be more transparent and yes, they got to listen to what I want. Um, as a whole, as a community, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't expect you know my director, or my vice director, to get an email from me and go to the next board meeting and say, "Well, pff, David Goldenberg wants us to do this, and we should do this." But uh, on a whole, if you know six land goes to our directors and says, "We'd like to see these things," or five land or zero land or whatever land, um, that it it should be something that they could bring to the table and they could have a conversation about, and then ha- come back to us with feedback if the board doesn't think that that's the right way to go, then, then let us know. And if they vote on something and didn't go the way we want, we should get feedback. That's what we want. That's yeah. what I want. Yeah. And, and, and the way, the way it's written, the way it's proposed, if we ask for something and it gets voted down, 
then my director can't come back and tell me. He can say that it, the board decided this, but he can't tell me the what or the why or the how other than. He supports the, their decision. Party line. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, it was big enough that the ARL actually responded. And didn't just go, uh, get away from my boy, you bother me. Uh, that's what I read in the response. <laughs> well, Okay. That was that was the response, but I kind of expected. Um, you know, I was like, uh, "La la 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 la." Yeah, yeah, but that's not what happened. They, um, President Roderick K five U R actually uh, put something on their website. It's like y'all are are throwing shade on the A R L. Quit it, quit it. Yeah. So. Um, Right up toward the, the top there, he says, uh, in the past few weeks, the ARL's board of directors has been subject to an organized misinformation campaign. It is being orchestrated by a group of hams, some of whom are well-intentioned, but have been misled. This effort, which consists of this, oh, this effort, which consists, wait a minute. I didn't edit this out very well. This effort consists of a series of mischaracterizations. I, he says a lot there. Um, yep. So, organized misinformation campaign, orchestrated, well-intentioned but misled, series of mischaracterizations. And there's like three. There's three bullet points, right? That which you got up on the screen. One was uh, Dick Norton censure. Two is. Uh, proposed revisions. Well, I guess there's just two. I thought there was three. Yeah. So it's um, kind of amazing that that it this what we have been doing and CQ and QRZ.com and and all of the communications from Hams to their directors. You know, we we went through the the the, re, the responses from my director and a few others as we had them a um, little over a week ago in the mm -hmm. previous show, and my director was going, ah, yeah, I don't want to open my mailbox anymore. Yeah, um, but they all are, and everybody was getting this stuff, so the impact was greater than. I keep going back and forth. The hams don't care, and yet enough hams really did, yeah, and got really angry about it. Yeah, that they you know came came up with this on the on the website, and you know the only thing I'm disappointed is is that there was no mea culpas in there anywhere. No, um, oh gosh, we you know maybe we haven't been as transparent as we should be. It's it's fake news. Yeah, they're they're learning from somebody. <laughs> Keep the politics out. Yep. All right. Uh, a few directors also got um, more directly involved, and this is a uh, um, Kermit Carlson uh, and uh, W nine W nine XA, uh, the Central Division Director. He lives uh, just outside Chicago, and. Um, he has actually introduced some modifications to um, uh, the code of conduct and a few things. <clears throat> um, he's introduced a motion that will eliminate ambiguities that have been interpreted as preventing an ARL director from telling the members in their division how they will or have voted on an issue. And let me emphasize that, that word ambiguities. That's, you're going to see that some more. That's that's sort of becoming the response theme, is that well, um, the code of conduct never said you couldn't talk. The director couldn't talk to you, but there were some ambiguities in there that some people are misinterpreting as saying that. And in the show where we went through that point by point by point, not ambigu ambiguities, right? Really clear. Yeah, you know, crystal clear stuff. Um, so uh, he he wants to let a director tell you how he voted 
whether he voted up and, and or down and, and whatever the resolution was, he wants to, your director to be able to, to say how he voted, but not disclose how any other directors voted. Um, he says he will not support the motions that give the president and vice president votes on the board. So that's one of the things that was in uh, Mike Lysenko's um, proposal. Right. Um, that the president and vice president, three vice presidents get board votes which is like stacking the deck, packing the board mm -hmm. with more reliable votes. Um, he says he would not support that. Uh, and, um, and it's looking like that one. No one is supporting that from, yeah, from what I've been reading. That's been the, from the responses that we saw. Um, he notes that the proposals to add language about removing members and <clears throat> by extension or removing directors, um, by revoking their membership, uh, he's removed that from his proposal. And if he says if they are reinstated, he would oppose them. Uh, however, he does say that the code of conduct limit on director's speech is an incorrect perception that must be cleared up. And once again, I think that there are there have been mistakes made in people understanding what the code of conduct has said about limiting a director's speech. Some hams went all the way to, you know, from zero to one and said it's limiting. They can't talk to us at all. And we try to be very careful in saying that it is after a vote has been taken, they are required to support the vote. Right. And maybe there's a little ambiguity there about just how much they can talk about. Because we pointed that out, too, in the Code of Conduct. There's sections that say they can talk to you about what happened. And there's sections that say all they can say is they support it. So maybe there is some ambiguity there. I'll, I'll have to be careful yep. about how I how I discuss that. Um, uh, let's see. Kermit, um, he he didn't wag his finger at us at hams out there and at the media and the, and critics the way that uh, Roderick did. Um, you know, it was Roderick who read his his comments that said we are organ an organized misinformation campaign and that hey, we've been misled and Kermit doesn't say that. So thanks Kermit. Um, so that's, you know, when, I, when yeah. I first read, when I first read his, um, his release, I thought, Oh, well, we're, we're, we're making some impact. Yeah. All the stuff we're sending and not, he's not a hundred percent of the way there, but it's better. Yep. And, and his, his um, post is mostly what uh, Rich Moses and at CQ was talking about when he when his comments became much milder about about the activity. Uh, let's see. Moving on to uh, Dakota Division. Have I got that up here? Yep, that's the next bullet point. Yeah. Just, oh no, I got that up there. Yeah. Am I, am I on the right one? Uh, yeah, that was okay. Yeah, that one. Uh, Delta is that? Yeah, okay. Okay, no, that's that's Delta. I get, well, maybe I don't have Dakota. No. Okay, looks like I don't have Dakota. Uh, sitting here ready to to talk to you about, but um, the the Dakota Division Director is uh, Matt Holden K Zero BBC, and uh, he says that he um he supports Kermit's proposal, so he's following on Kermit to clarify the code of conduct, but he says he's got no problem following it. He believes it's in the best interests of the league and amateur radio for directors to stop discussing their opposition to a proposal once it has been approved by the majority. And this is the language that he uses. <clears throat> once a vote has been tallied, it is my obligation in a public setting to present the board's decision, not my own. The board and all the ARL staff and volunteers need to present a unified voice when they speak in public or with government officials. Once the ARL board of directors establishes a formal position on a topic, the failure to proceed forward with that unified public opinion is a disservice to the members and a detriment to the hobby. So that is the statement of, um, and there's more to it from the but that's all I've quoted out here from uh, Matt Holden, K Zero BBC, the director for the. Dakota division. And we see that statement a lot that failure to proceed forward with a unified public opinion is a disservice to the members and a detriment to the hobby. 
no one so far has ever backed that up with anything. It's just obvious on its face. Don't you get it? It's clear as a bell. It's bad if we don't all say the same thing. All together now. Feel free to agree or disagree. No, you know, it, it, um, it rings of what happened to Dick Norton. Although, you know, my understanding is it didn't say what they claim that he said anyways. Um, and from some of the research we were doing around, you know, what does a board look like and how does a board work? And, you know, in a corporate board setting, mm, that's pretty much how it goes. And that's what you want. And you stack the, the, the board accordingly. We're a different kind of organization. And I think that in a membership organization where I'm a member and I vote for a director and they vote for the board, um, you got to be able to have some some give and take and some play. And and I think as we move further down through the points here, we'll uh, we'll touch on some more of that gag orders type type stuff that I don't yeah. like. All of my life, this kind of language has rankled me. I've never, you know, maybe, you know, not a team player, not, not ask some of the teams that I've been on. Am I a team player? Do I pull for the direction the things ought to go? I think I do. I think I've helped groups of people perform some pretty remarkable feats of whatever it does we were working on. You know, usually I'm pushing buttons, making audio or video, but, um, you know, I, I do a pretty good job, but the idea that you must fall in line and your opinion no longer matters once the majority has rendered theirs, especially when there's a little bit of suspicion about how that majority came about and what it is that they want to do. Um, I've, ne- I've personally, that's just bothered me. And, and that's me, that's why I'm paying attention to this. And most of the time it's the, oh, they had a board meeting. Oh yeah, it's January. I guess they did. This time got my attention. Um, let's see. Uh, so Matt says that uh, going to the meeting, he was inclined to not to support the idea of giving the president and, and vice president board votes. Um, but he solicited comments. He was uh, on his uh, website, he, he asked his division members to tell him what they think. And hopefully by now they have, because it's, you know, they're just about to get started. I'm sure his mailbox is flooded with those comments. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Some, okay. some boilerplate and some not. So now here is uh, the Delta division. Um, uh, their, their comments, this is uh, from uh, David Norris, K5UZ, is their director. He also doesn't think that uh, Mike Lysenko's proposal to give votes to the president and vice presidents will fly. He is also on the ambiguity bandwagon. He says the new motion will clarify those ambiguities that have given rise to the perceived gag order. That assertion is incorrect. So um, he's he's clear. I, I guess I'm waffling a little bit. I'm saying there are there is some conflicting conflicting language. There's a lot of things that say just a, agree and shut up. There's a one or two little things that may say, yeah, you know, you have the obligation to talk to your members about what happened. But just tell them you agree and shut up. Yeah, if that's if that's what you want to call an ambiguity. OK, there's an ambiguity. To me, that's that's a, a, a internal conflict. And, I th- and, you know, what they were really going for doesn't seem ambiguous at all. So those are the directors that put out um, information on their websites. Um, there's nothing on the websites for the other directors. Um, some of them had made comments in newsletters going out to their division members. Um, and those things didn't end up on the websites. And I, and I was going to you know, sort of make a thing about how some of the websites are really out of date and, you know, poorly informed, but I'm going to, I'm going to skip that part. I don't know if you, if you ever look at, I'm not sure how your division website stacks up, you know, mine is sort of in the middle. It's, it's, it's kept up to date, but it doesn't really say anything. I'll, um, I'll have to check into that and get back to you. <laughs> yeah. Cause you know, who, who goes to them to, 
there was there was one division's website where the most recent thing on it was from 2014. Yeah, I don't. And I'll 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 admit that I have not looked at it. Who goes there for their news? Yep. <clears throat> so, um, my ARL voice. Last time we did a show, they were brand new. They were just flushing out their uh, or filling out their um, their website, um, and hadn't really said very much. And uh, now, um, it's got a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Let's see if I got that. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to get to this new. Uh, Your new monitor. Yeah, my new my new monitor. It's got all my full screen stuff on it. So here they are. Um, they've added the hour positions, and that is where they detail. And if you if you want to know all the details, we'll talk about this more in a little bit. If you want to know all the details of what's going on, the, the hour position is where they want to where they want to be. Um. And uh, once again, these are the folks that are behind it. Um, put this up on the screen. Uh, Rick um, Tavin, N6XI, Kip Edwards, um, W6SZN, Jim Talens, who's been on the show, um, N3JT, Rusty Epps, W6OAT, Fred Hopengarten, who's been on the show, K1VR, Bob Flamiglio, uh, K3RF, Marty Vall, Vall. I keep wanting to say Vall. Wall. I'm adding my Hawaiian to it for some reason. Marty Wall, N6VI, friend of yours. Um, John Crovelli, W2GD. Um, Rich Gelber, K3WR. Bob Wilson, N6TV. And Jim Idelson, K1VR. And m one of the most important things about that group is the the um, that they're all members, most life members, most many in you know, Maxim Society and Mm -hmm. legacy circle and, and, and the folks that, that put a lot of time and effort and money into the league, They're strong yeah, league don't. supporters. Yeah. And have served and have served some, the league in some way, shape or form. Yeah. This is not the burn it down crowd. Right. This is the change. It, it's, it's, you know, it's the, uh, the argument, America, love it or leave it. America, change it or lose it. You know, it's mm -hmm. two, the two poles there. Mm -hmm. Um, Make it so if you if if somehow you've made it to this show and you haven't gone to myarlvoice.org, just to look over their stuff, they've also got a Facebook page. Um, then, yeah, uh, don't 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 go there first. <laughs> yeah, no, go to the, go to the website first. Go to the website, especially uh, for us on Facebook that are watching us live. Go go to their website. Yep, they've also got a, a what's new section. Um, so you, you look what's over new? there and you and because the site is is getting a lot of content. Yep. So if you want to see what's been added and, you know, over the, the, uh, you know, past few days, past few weeks, it's, you know, in chronological order. So you can see what, what has been added, um, and to what sections. So, uh, when we first looked at the site, it was brand new, um, They've been added a lot of information, useful links, the what's new section. Our positions is the most important one right now. That's where they outline their position on each of the proposals. And we're talking about the modified new proposals. A, a lot of them, they got no position. It's not like that, you know, they have to say something about every little thing that's in there. Cause there's a lot of stuff in these proposals that is just clean up language. Yeah. Um, changes no in the way of doing business, but, but nothing controversial. And yeah. There's, so, no, there's nothing to do when the lawyer, the lawyers fix the, the, the bad writing that was in there for whoever knows for how long there, there's some parts that just, yeah, fix it. It's yeah. wrong. And yeah, my editorial comment is that there is no snark. There's no gotcha commentary. Um, they have their reasoning. They have their explanations for why they think what they think. They keep it pretty short. They don't go into a lot of depth. I think that sometimes they might maybe could have gone into a few more paragraphs on these. <clears throat> um, uh, but even even as short as they, they keep their comments, they can be totally engaging to you or they can be yawn-inducing. <laughs> sort of depends on how much you want to get involved, how, how wrapped up you are in league governance. Um, and, you know, the, so that's, that is the inspiration for the title that I put up here, Board of Directors. 
You know, it's like, uh, mm, some of us are, and some of us, you know, we don't, we don't want to know. Uh, do they support their arguments enough? I mean, do they provide when they say this is, this is something we don't like and here's why do they support them well enough? Um, I would say that if you agree with them, yes, they do. And if you don't agree with them, well, then no amount of explanation is going to make you happy. And, uh, if you're in the middle, you know, if you're looking to be convinced, well, maybe they don't really have quite enough information. Maybe they could go into more depth. This is pretty new website. So, you know, they yeah, put, these guys these guys put this up and stood this up in a, in a short period of time. Yeah. So I can imagine it'd be hard to, to to do a ton of depth about about all of it. Yeah. Uh, one thing I was noticing is that they don't really offer much in the way of alternative language. Once in a while, a couple things that they say, this is the way maybe it could be instead. Most mm -hmm. of the time it's, uh, we don't like this and here's what we don't like it. And a little bit about here's what we would like, but if you want to grease the skids on something and get it through, you get a leg up on doing that. If you say, and here are the words we think should be in the, mm -hmm. in the code of conduct, in the bylaws, in the articles of association, and they don't do that. So, um, maybe there wasn't time. I spent all day, this document that we're looking at, that I'm, that I'm, that I'm looking at over here. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, uh, uh what, what camera do I want to, yeah. It hit 16 there, pages. There it at one, and, yep, yeah. It's over there. <clears throat> I, I wrote, I spent all day researching and writing that. Um, and you know, that's doing this stuff takes some work. If, if, yep. Consuming content. This is one of my favorite things about making TV commercials. So 30 second commercial. They make mostly 30 second TV commercials. And and people would think, well, how long do you spend doing that? It must take you a couple of minutes. It takes days. Yeah, it takes a long time. It takes days. Um and, and there may be and there may have there may be a point of diminishing returns. I mean, they may have spent hours and hours dissecting each one of these things. You know, for this for the stuff again, and I'm on the I support their side. Um, I'm with them, and had they spent hours and hours on each one of the items, it wouldn't have made me made me any more with them. Now, may had it have swayed some of the? I'm not with them. Probably not. But maybe I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so, um, in terms of alternative language, maybe there wasn't time for them to do it. The original proposals came out last summer. They were refined over months, then and and, uh, and then they got uh, changed once the complaint started coming out. In you know a few weeks of of uh, of, mm -hmm. of getting adjusted, um, I'm still wondering: Are they going to be voted on this weekend? Because um, I don't know. And I was I was talking to one of the the uh, um, uh, my arrow voice uh, steering committee members on the phone last night. And one of the questions I posed, uh, and th those guys aren't ready to be on the show. I kind of wish that they were on this show, yeah. but they're not ready to be on this show. They're, we're ready for them when they're ready for us. They'll come around after the, after the board meeting. Yeah. I was saying, um, are, is this going to be voted on this weekend? And, and they said, well, good question. <laughs> Don't know. I mean, and, and it's not like that it's already been decided. They may or may not. If they were, and we were told that we were not supposed to have seen this stuff in advance, that somebody leaked it. And I think that's what we were told. Yeah. And, and the IRL brass was not happy that it got leaked out to us. Well, if they had arrived at the board meeting and uh, we hadn't seen them, and they got voted on, well, when would that full, frank, open discussion with the membership have taken place? There would have been no opportunity. If they got voted in, then the board comes out and says, look what we did. Happy, Be happy with it. We are. Uh, so, Wait, But are we mischaracterizing it? We may be mischaracterizing it, yes. What was, what we may was be being the, misled. Yeah, or, or, no, I think we're misleading. We, we, yeah, we're the doing, doing the misleading. Yeah, or or maybe the the misleaders were the ones that leaked it, and we're just spreading. Yeah, we are orchestrating 
We are yeah. an organized misinformation campaign being orchestrated by a group of hams, some of whom are well-intentioned, but have been misled. That's the Rick Roderick. You know, I think you just you just admitted to the, our, our organization because we spent time talking about this. I think we're part of it. Otherwise, I would claim disorganization. <laughs> well, I spent all day, all day yesterday organizing this, so. Yeah. Uh, so, um, and now I'm lost about my own comments here. Um, I'm asking... No, you sure you're on to the, I think you're, you finished that, that last point. Still wondering if we're getting voted on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now we're on to, now we're on to talking about what we were talking about, which was Rick's comment about the organized misinformation. Who's he, who's he talking about? That's the bullet we're on. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, um, looking at the time frame, he was, he was, Roderick was referring to the earlier reactions to the initial proposals when he was talking about it being orchestrated by a, a Group of hams, well-intentioned, misled. Um, oh, I, I got it. Is 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 he when he was talking about all that? Is he talking about the my uh, my A R R L <clears throat> voice steering committee? The folks that are behind that is that who he's talking about? Um, is is that what you see when you look at their website? Do you see organized misinformation? Do you see it orchestrated by a group of hams who are well-intentioned but have been misled? That's not what I see when I look at their website. Is that what you see? Mm-hmm. So maybe not because, again, he was he was a little before they came out with their full-up website. And, that you can you see know, right so, so even, even if they had just started their posting, and, and if you think about, you know, again, we kind of went through the history over the last couple of weeks – We've all been kind of singing the same song. The the Maya Errol voice guys, um, our our commentary, um, dance commentary, the stuff in CQ. It's it's all we're all singing the same song. Yeah. Um, the, only, so the, the only maybe, other maybe point this out to everybody. The only other uh, group that I can think of that he might be more referring to is sort of the the disorganized rabble that appears on qrz.com. Facebook pages, things like that. Just, yeah. you know, the, the moment you see anything about ARRL, you, you get instantly a clutch of people that are anti ARRL and, and no matter what you say, they have something bad to say about the league. And of course those folks are doing happy dance right now. Right. Cause, Oh, we've got everybody on our side now. No, you don't. You really don't. No. And I haven't, and I haven't, other than a couple of, a couple comments that I saw on QRZ, there aren't a whole lot of people. There were, there was one guy that went a little off the deep end today yep. or yesterday. Um, Which direction? But there aren't a whole lot of those people. What's that? Which direction? Uh, so in support of. <clears throat> support of the league. Uh, of the yeah. league. And, yeah. and he went a little, he went a little overboard. <laughs> I've seen a few of those. Yeah. Not really that many, surprisingly. Just a few. And, and they may speak to the um, the the nature of the complaint of what it is we're talking about. It it has some some meat to it that um, you know is not just burn it down. Well, you know, or or you know, the other side of you know the the accusation of the organized misinformation campaign. Maybe we got it so wrong <laughs> and they are so out for our best interests and we're just fools, but I don't feel like a fool. I mean, sometimes I do, but I don't think on this particular matter. Yeah. Uh, there, there are some things probably that we have misunderstood, but not, oh, sure. not the fundamentals. Well, and, and there's also things we've been asking for over and over and over again, you know, details and commentary and whatever. And, and that's, the, that's the part that's the most lacking and well, frustrating. Well, you, you don't understand that, we, that this is proprietary information that we have that is confidential. And we can't just be handing it out willy-nilly. You don't understand. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. No, I don't. So, no. shut up. Yeah. So some of the, some of the folks have proposed, like um, even uh, yeah, Fred at uh, QRZ.com proposed, um, let's open the meetings, let's broadcast them mm-hmm. as audio and video. That's hard. And it's uh, 
Well, actually, I think it's it's possible mm-hmm. with relatively relatively inexpensive technology that is available today. If you kept it simple, you distribute some mics around so it sounds good. Mm-hmm. It's more important to sound good than to look good. Um, people will put up with bad video for a long time that if you give them bad audio, they will turn, turn away pretty quick. So, um, it, it would take distributing some mics. Um, so everybody's got a good mic to be talking into. Yeah. They, they don't have to be $350 Heil mics. They can be $65 ATR 2100s like you're talking into right now. Like I'm talking into sounds, right now. Sounds just fine. So can I stop you here for a second? So what's the yeah. what's the what's the goal for this? Um, I mean, and I, I have some feeling about what my goal would be, but I wonder from, from your perspective, is it so that there is a a live thing that you could listen and participate with, or such that it's recorded as that we can follow up and after the fact on where it went? Well, because because there's there's even you know, from a technology standpoint, you know, in, in, in my business world. Uh, you could accomplish a lot of this with, you know, like Plantronics equipment. You know, you put Plantronics or um, not Plantronics. Who's the guy that do? Who are the ones that make the the voice over IP speaker things that sit on your desk? Um, oh, shoot, my mind's boring. Speaker phones, right? Yeah, with, right. With remote mics and whatever. Yeah, I think Plantronics. all of those. I've never heard one of those sound good. They you know, always we, we, sound we terrible have, to me. We have some new ones now that. It, that come with, um, you can plug two or three remote mics in and cover a table where you can have actually have a good conversation with five or six or eight people. And and if you do that on a conference call, you can share that conference call. Now you, you lose the video, of course, and you could record that to share out with others later. Um, that could be a simpler way to do it. Does it, does it fill the bill? Does it, does it fit what, what you're looking for? Well, it goes back to the audio has got to be good. Yeah. And I have never heard a good, a good conference call set up. Some okay. people sound okay. Some don't. Yeah. Okay. Um, th- if, if people have little side conversations, they end up overwhelming the person mm-hmm. who's trying to say something, if they're, especially if they're a little bit closer to the mic, because they're not thinking, you know, I'm, I'm just talking to you. I'm not thinking that the, the microphone is sitting there right in front of me and five feet away from the person who's trying to make their point. So it yeah. messes it up for the audience. I don't think that it would be a, a situation of um, getting feedback from, from the listeners or the viewers. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe, maybe a way for someone to monitor a chat room and forward in a question or two, but we don't want to extend the board meeting from the weekend to a three week affair. And that's, right one of the things that might happen. Mm-hmm. Um, I would not expect a, a multi-camera production with close-ups and graphics. And I'm thinking of, you know, what I do for the Tapper conference and some of the, the right. um, ham fest forums and stuff, you know, that's well, that- serious video production. We're not going to roll in the mobile truck and, you know, and bring in the, the uh, three inch wide uh, uh, video snakes and, you know, and fire up the cameras and have, you know, cameramen and, and directors and stuff that we're not going to do that. That's well, and, and there's, there's issues with that too. Cause if we want, if we want, you know, closer to real time or real time, uh, that isn't going to happen at all in that kind of setting. Well, I mean, it could, right. okay. you know, I mean, yeah. we're, we are real time right now and I can switch up. Yeah. Eight, okay. Eight, one camera, two cameras, three cameras, four cameras, right. five but, cameras, but you, six cameras. Don't try that at home. Gary. Well, I mean, they could have somebody with my skills yeah. doing that, sure. but the, yeah. but I don't see the need. One webcam sitting in the corner mm-hmm. encompassing the whole thing is probably enough. Mm-hmm. If it became a thing and you know, everything was great and somebody wanted to put more effort into it, yeah, maybe they could. Right. So so the, really the question, though, is um, would that inhibit that open, honest discussion? I mean, the whole argument against even... Uh, discussing board activity after the fact. You know, just just the whole argument against a director saying, and here's what these guys talked about, and here's the, this guy's point, and here's that guy's point, and here was my point. And they can't do that. They're not 
the code of conduct says they can't talk about that. The non-disclosure agreements say they can't talk about that. And the whole justification is that the board members wouldn't feel free to discuss and to express themselves candidly. And of course, there are proprietary sensitive topics that you don't put in an open forum. Sure, but you but take there those are off. some. There, you know, you take, you take those offline. Yeah, this is not the UN Security Council. Right. This is ARL. Yeah. This this goes to like how many people want to watch the sausage get made. Yeah. And and I and I do, but I can stomach that. But there are people on both ends that aren't going to want you to see it getting made or what goes in it. I, I, I wrote down here, and I'm not sure I agree with myself anymore. I would like to run for director just to sit in on those wild and crazy meetings that just where everywhere it's a free form, everybody, you know, talks smack about whatever it is they want to talk about because it's so sensitive that we can't show it to the members. You'd be a total <clears throat> hit there, Gary. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure they can already disqualify me from yeah from running um one way or another i mean just doing this show this is a conflict of interest <clears throat> right. you had something to say about that we'll get to that in a moment um it closed sessions there are plenty of examples of governing bodies that conduct sensitive business in closed sessions it would take a little bit more logistics planning for the weekend but you know because the the board is not like congress that goes on for months so they can schedule open and closed sessions you know they're trying to get things done in probably two and a half days mm -hmm. um so you'd have to have a plan for the closed sessions and put that together so those are my thoughts on should we be able to watch them yeah <laughs> And it occurred to me afterwards, after I wrote all that up, would anybody? They would watch this one. There, there'd be people that would watch. There'd be a few people that would watch. There'd be a few people that would watch. Yeah, it was, it's those people that go through the minutes of the fine tooth comb. Mm -hmm. um, well, there'll, I, there'll be those people that that have something that's on the docket that are that's of interest to them, and it may not be the same people every time. Although those people that go through with the fine tooth comb, they'd probably be there all the time. Yeah. I mean, you can, you and I can can watch every meeting of the Energy and Commerce Committee at the House. Mm -hmm. um, that was chaired by Greg Walden. He was a ham. W seven EQI. I watched the one where they talked about the Parity Act. I've never mm -hmm. watched one since. They mm -hmm. talk about stuff I'd be interested in. They they do telecommunications. The FCC meetings are are broadcast. Some plenty of stuff out there that cover stuff I'd be interested in, but I don't, don't watch because who's got time? There's a reason for that. They're busy listening to this show from beginning to end. Right. Um, so yeah, I don't think it would be, uh, I don't think it would be a hit with some limited exceptions of times when it would, it would get more attention. Yeah. But if, but if we like were this really weekend, <laughs> Yeah, and you know we're asking for transparency, and it would it would fill that would fill that gap in transparency. And you know if they did it and and nobody watched, they could say, "Hey, look, we did it," and nobody watched. Yeah. The and the other thing that people complain about if you have cameras there is that you will get people showboating and grandstanding. I don't see that as a big issue. Um. There's some of it going on in Congress, but they they they're showboating and grandstanding and, and uh, giving us government theater all the time. Um, and you know maybe that's a result of the media coverage that they get. I don't know. Yeah, and and you know, none of this is none of this is stuff that I've that I've seen. But there's been some inferences about part of the reason that uh, N6AA was censured you know, was that. Um, that he's um, an opinionated person and um, likes to likes to challenge the status quo, and maybe that's part of the they don't want to see how this goes down because maybe <laughs> maybe it's not all friendly. Maybe maybe if we looked at it, this would be um, uncomfortable or unpleasant or or who knows what. Yeah, maybe it is. Maybe we're not allowed to know. 
but we're not allowed to know. And that's the part that I think rubs us both the wrong way. So um, I spent a little time trying to understand because we're, we are told that the, the background for the code of conduct um, is that it's just general board of director, uh, good business policy. <clears throat> to have a code of conduct and have that code of conduct tell directors that they need to speak with one voice when they speak to the public about the decisions of the corporation, of the company, of the nonprofit, the entity. Mm-hmm. It is for the good of the organization and the members that they speak with one voice. And so they were, they were told that. And I was going, really? Is that, is that, is that, is that what's really out there? So I I did I spent some of my time yesterday doing Google searches, trying to come up with with word searches with terminology that would elicit something like that, and um and you did too, and and the and the guys at the My Air All Voice have done some of that. Mm-hmm. Um, what I found was um a, a lot of a lot of backing for just what the league is saying, just what the code is saying. Lots of places will say, yeah, this is this is the way boards work. This is what boards should do. I didn't find any of them tell me why. Other right. than it's for the good of the organization. Mm-hmm. And I could not find a distinction between what the ARL is, which is a diverse uh, member, ge- geographically diverse member um supported organ uh, mem- you know where you vote <laughs> yeah. right D- you know democratic organization where the directors are voted in by a a large population of members mm-hmm. I couldn't find any discussion of that versus a corporate board where they're appointed right that was most of the stuff that i found was was you know businesses organizations nonprofit but there wasn't a whole lot that we found that you know, could lead you to the, yeah, you know, membership and, um, and voting and, and those types of things. Yeah. So the league was told, the board was told by their, um, law firm, the law firm that they retain that have for a long time, that this is something that they needed to do. Um, and, uh, they believed it apparently. <laughs> Because mm-hmm. there's really not much out there arguing against it. I tried to. You you would think that if 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 this bothers me, not the world's deepest thinker, that it would be bothering a lot of other people that you know, have my similar pro, uh, proclivity to. Um, yeah, I don't really like to be told what to do all that much. There should be some of that out there, and there very well may be. It just may be that I didn't find it. One of the things that I was talking to that fellow from the. Uh, my ARL voice I was talking to on the phone last night about that issue. Cause I put it up on their Facebook page. I said, what's, is any, is anybody found anything like that? And he, he gave me a call and want to talk about that in particular and said, you're going to have a hard time finding that because it is not out there. Right. So we haven't, and we did, we did have a hard time finding that. Yeah. So it, if you want to argue to the league that, now, nah, this idea that the board needs to all speak with one voice, they're going to be able to come back at you and say, uh, here's all of the, you know, here are the organizations, here are the, the, the industry associations, here are the, um, all of the support for something like that. But that's who it's coming from. It's coming from businesses and organizations and industry associations. It's not coming from directors and members who are saying, but wait a minute, and I, I don't know why we're not finding that. Maybe it's not happening. Uh, the fellow I was talking to did say the ARL is pretty unique. And I know there's people who complain about saying pretty unique. That's like being a little bit pregnant. You are or you're not unique. <laughs> it is different than most other organizations in that it is a, a member-supported thing across a wide, wide range of uh, um geographic area. So I don't know. Uh, yeah. And you know, the, 
some of my some of the stuff that I looked at and my arrow voice, if you go look at that page, um, they had a good section on that they did the, the stuff that they did do research wise on boards. Um, and and mostly they didn't refute any of the everybody's gotta be online, but they did call out a whole bunch of things around um, you know, other actions like, you know, setting the bar higher for making decisions, you know, two thirds or three quarters to um you know, to push things forward, like things like censure, right. And requiring due process, um, which I know that some of the folks that we've talked about over the last couple of weeks hadn't really felt like they, they got due process or understood what they did or what they didn't do. Yeah. And I think you were telling me that, that, um, well, a lot of the support for the idea of a board that supports their group is there. The league has taken it to a next level yeah, and how picky they are about it, how specific they are, how well you know they're setting themselves up for for their their version of success. Yeah, you know it's easier if you set the bar low and you know you have a direction you want to go. And I think part of the challenge is there's a lot of us out here that don't understand the direction they're going or don't like what we're seeing in terms of how they're getting there. And so we're asking these questions. Yeah, and 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 once again, some of the bottom line is that 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 we think that there is a group that wants to run things and does not want to have to deal with board members who are, are disagreeing and disputing the direction things are going. And we think that that is coalesced around one thing primarily, and that is the Amateur Radio Parity Act. Mm -hmm. I think that that is the driving force for, for one part of the board trying to be exclusionary and get rid of another part of the board. And that's, I think that that is the core. A lot of stuff floating around it, but I think that's the core. So uh, there are a lot of detailed um, provisions, things that they're going to be voting on or, or discussing, um, many of them non-controversial, some of them more controversial, way more than we can detail in a program now that's already you know, as long as we need it to be. Yep. Um, did you pick out, were you able to pick out a few things? That, yeah, there, know, there, 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 were, there are a couple of things. There are a couple of things that, that, um, you know, stuck in my craw enough to want to like call them out. Um, things like, uh, you know, again, the confidentiality, um, and basically, if you read the, and this was um, uh, proposal, and basically what it boils down to is you can't talk about the way others voted. Once the vote's recorded, uh, you know, as a, as a director who voted, you can, you can say what you voted and you can say what was decided and that's it. And you can't discuss with others the what or the why or the how. Uh, that was one of the items. So again, that's uh, a, it's a baby step, but not. Yep. Yep. So now does, you can talk about, you there. can talk about what you said and you can talk about what they decided and, but then you kind of have to leave it alone. Uh, there was a good, there was a good section under the, um, against, um, in, in one area where, where the, the old terminology was a board member must accept and publicly support board decisions that was dropped, which is positive in, in my standpoint. But then it goes on to say, um, you know, there, there's a compliance statement that follows behind it. And basically the compliance statement boils down to, uh, you can, once they make a decision and, and the decision is final, then you got to toe the line and, and your alternate it is you can consider, uh, resigning your position on the board. And so my way or the highway. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, yeah, I'm not on board with that. Um, let's see what else here. Uh, in, in some of the Norris proposals, um, uh, there's a motion uh, in his EC2 uh, that seeks to define uh, limits and liabilities for directors and parameters for, for what's covered and not. And, um, you know, it just left me thinking, well, somebody's worried about lawsuits um, and, and what the outcome around the lawsuits um, are and were. And a little later on uh, in EC11, there's, you know, they're, they're forcing um, for dispute resolution um, binding arbitration 
And, uh, and again, it, you know, suggests, um, the ARL effort to minimize future cost, legal cost, and, uh, makes me wonder what were the past legal costs that they're doing this based upon, or if there aren't any, what are the future ones coming up that, that they're worried about that they have their eyes on to require this. Now, and someone may counter to say, well, this is just, you know, standard boilerplate legalese. Bob but Famiglio is, is um, talking about maybe suing mm-hmm. um, to find out why he was disqualified from running for his office. There was talk about um, Doug Raymond, K4AC, <coughs> the uh, the guy who was, dis- was a director from Southeastern Division um, and then was disqualified from running talk of a lawsuit. I'm not sure where that went. There was the lawsuit with um, the NTS thing mm-hmm. um, that, that the league won uh, recently. So they've had some like that. And that's part, I think part of why they're talking about putting something in that would just be uh, just required ab- arbitration rather than directors being able to sue. Right. Well, and, and if you talk, you know, some of those cases you talked about, um, um, Bob Flamingo, right? Doesn't understand why they um, specifically they pulled him out, right? Yeah. You know, conflict of interest. Well, doesn't and, understand and that, because they won't say. Because they won't say. Well, and that's and that's one of the things uh, the Myerl voice did a really good job when they talked about boards and pointing out um, concerns that they had was, um, you know, Bob doesn't understand what he did or you know where he stepped over the line or exactly what they're talking about. Um, and in part of the, the verbiage that was there, and I'm not sure it made it to the final, um, version. I think it's didn't, cause I don't remember seeing it. The, the whole idea about the board can remove a member for cause, but didn't really spell out what the cause was. And, um, there isn't any clear statement on, you know, where's the line and where do I step over it? Right. You know, I, we may be sitting here today and may get a you know a notice in the mail next week saying, hey, guys, thanks for your membership. You're out because you stepped over the line. But yeah. I don't know what that line is. Um, and we're definitely not towing the line, but we're not board members. But the, the you know, whatever for cause could be whatever their cause is that they yeah. wanted. And that was that was pointed at every member, not just board members. Yeah, exactly. It, right. was, so, it, was, so, it was as an every member thing. And it's a way to get to a board member. Yes. Because if you terminate their membership for cause, then uh, they can't they be a board can't member be, anymore. They can't be a board member. But but it could yeah. apply outside of that. Yeah. And I know and, and I know I know it's a big deal because they could use that to, to you know, in the future remove some of the you know, their quote unquote troublemakers. Yeah. And this it, this is a you know a difficult legal thing because um I, I'm told that, that Connecticut uh, corporate law doesn't allow um, a uh, uh, executives or the rest of the board to um, to remove a member only the uh, an elected member only el- the elect uh, only the electing constituency right only the members who did the electing can then do the removal so I, I can't I can't speak uh, knowledgeably about that that's what I'm told right and then so that begs the question if they put it in the bylaws does the by- bylaws make it okay? Or, you know, Connecticut law, I assume that state law would supersede that. But if right. you agree, if you agree signing the code of conduct that says that they're allowed to remove you, then you signed the contract. I mean, that's the thing. That's the thing. We don't know. Yeah. The Until they, like they go to uh, go to court and find out. Um, and, and, you know, would the thing about, well, we didn't remove him as a director. We removed him as a member. And that sort of removed him as a director as a consequence, but that wasn't what we were really going for. I don't know if that's a game you can play that would uh, get you anywhere or not. Right. Um, we will need to wrap up here cause I got to get some dinner before I'm about to do another show, not a ham radio show. It's a, a podcaster show. Um, so he did cool. need to get there. What I wanted to point out was that, um, if you wanted to look at these uh, issues in detail, and, you know, have a, a travel guide to go through them, whether you agree with the My RL Voice positions or not, in the tab, in the section that is their positions, um, they will go through all of these in great detail. They'll explain 
what the proposal is. They'll explain what they uh, what they think about it. This is what I was talking about when I said some of them are in detail, some of them are not. Some places they will um, just say we don't have a position. Um, it's what you're right. seeing on your screen. For those of you who are looking at the video, the stuff in blue is is their their positions. And as you can see, none of this is really long. It's just as as it is a whole thing all put together. It's going to take a while. It could be snooze right. inducing unless this is the kind of thing you really love. And and so you know we're back to board b o r e d of directors. You know, <laughs> yeah. How uh, how much interest uh, can we maintain in uh, in something like that? So um, I think uh, unless you got something that's uh, burning burning a hole in your brain, I think that's it. I think in uh, nine hours and forty minutes, this all starts <laughs> up again. And your door's opening, so somebody needs you. Yeah, no, somebody's just coming to say goodbye. Huh. So in nine hours and forty minutes, this thing all s- starts the meeting. And it goes, I know you, I saw that. I saw that at the top of the last hour. So I think it's clicking down from the MyRL voice site. Yep. And um, I guess. Hopefully there'll be some news in the next day or two and we'll probably do a follow-up show on that. That's all I got. Oops. It's um, nine, nine hours and 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Oh, yeah, right. Because it's 40 after the hour. Okay. <laughs> right. All it's right. coming soon. So, to, a, uh, to a Connecticut near you. If yeah. you're near Connecticut. <laughs> so somewhere, somewhere near Newington. Yeah. In a, a closed room. All the air vents taped over. So you, no one... Uh, no secret information can leak out. I think they're to, to check their laptops and cell phones at the door before they go in and go through the metal detectors. Yep. Everybody now is brought to you by you. Thank you very much. For those of you that have contributed through the Patreon, through PayPal, through sending a check, through uh, <clears throat> stuff in a $10 bill covered up by a couple of layers of paper and sticking it in an envelope and sending it this way. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, you are? I am David Goldenberg, W0DHG. I am Gary Pierce. I am. You are. There Gary, you are. Gary Pierce, KN4AQ. Like the titles go away, you can lead off. Over and out. We just stare here now for a moment. Maybe we're just going to sit here and look. You got you to take some pictures, so I have to smile. Oh, that's right. Uh, how do I want to do this? Um, let me put the uh, title back up. I can't see what I'm looking like. I guess I'm smiling it off. We all should do one like this. Oh, yeah. Or yawning. Okay, let's try a yawn. <sighs> I think that's, I got a feeling that's the one. <laughs> yep. And now I need to do one that's, uh, kind of over the shoulder, uh, looking at all the monitors and stuff, looking official. Look right up at your camera. There you go. Because when you're looking down at the screen, it looks like your eyes are kind of closed and you're sort of asleep. Yeah. And now I realized I need to do the, uh, the we need to do the yawning one with um, without the title. So back to another yawn. Oh, being polite about it. Oh. Okay. You didn't stop Facebook, did you? They're getting this all live. They're getting all this live. This will not be the best part of the show this time. Yeah, here's the head mic. Oh, it didn't. It didn't make too much noise because of the sock on there. I am going to change this thing out. All the, right. The uh, the the shock mount. Yeah, I'm gonna want to put the cheap one on that that I got with the with the arm because yeah, this doesn't work. probably it probably listen, won't listen. <laughs> yeah, it might it might help with that. I don't know. We'll it's see. Where did where did you get the arm? Is that just great. a uh, just a cheap Amazon? Okay, it's one of those things that it, like they put a tensor light on or something. No, actually, this was no. It, it was, was a microphone thing. No, it was a microphone thing, and even and I, you know I. I I should be smarter, but I'm not. It even came with the. Oh, but I just. Hey. But I just. I just haven't. I hadn't had time. Yeah. I, I literally have been in deathbed for 
days. Maybe we should explain to the audience the idea that like this microphone is being suspended. These are all rubber bands. And the uh, microphone is literally being suspended in midair by rubber bands. And in theory, the rubber bands don't transmit um, noise if I tap on something. It, if if I were just tapping, well, the, you know, the Heil's not bad anyway. <laughs> right. It doesn't have a lot of a lot of handling noise. There's mine. But yeah, it, if if it weren't in this, and I tapped on the. Uh, yeah, on the uh, the boom, you, you would hear it thumping pretty badly, and so David can show you what it sounds like to hear it thumping pretty badly. I couldn't, I couldn't wait. I've got to do this now. Oh, okay. Here's thumping really badly. Yeah, those ATR twenty one hundreds, as as nice as they are for everything, they are not good for handling noise. I discovered that when I was using one uh, to do the interview with Jerry Ellsworth. Um, it uh, picks up a lot of handling noise. So you got to be very careful with it. You, you want it on a boom of some kind. So I'm still jealous you got to talk to Jerry. All right, I'm going to take this out. and need to get her back on the show. Yeah, we should do that. All right, so the first problem is that it doesn't actually grip the mic all the way. So I'm going to have to adjust that. Oh, usually the problem with those mics is they're too thick for something. Well, you know, it's funny because that's, that's what I was thinking. Let's see. <clears throat> all, all I'm hearing is um, the actual... I'm, I'm not hearing anything transmitted through all of the stuff. I'm just hearing... You didn't hear the stuff that you heard before. The, the right. No, no, no the, spring noise. Okay, that's good. All right. Hey, so this cheap... Twenty-four dollar, whatever it was, thirty dollar. It it worked. Okay, well that's good because I got one for uh, for mine um, that I think I paid about twenty-five dollars for it, and it uh, uh, <laughs> let all the noise through. It didn't. I was like, there was no rubber bands there at all. This is a the Heil branded cage, shock yeah. mount, and it's about a hundred bucks. Yeah. Well, you know, mine's not. Um, Mine looks like it's um, um, elastic cord. It's not rubber bands. But there's rubber bands inside the plastic. Rubber cord. bands are elastic cord. Yeah. Okay. But it's got like it's got like um, you know it's got like a, a fibrous cover on it. You oh well, yeah. These yeah these those these are two. two. They, right? they, they, it looks like it, it. It looks like it is um, a fabric. This is so I just gotta make but. either gotta make this bigger. Or it's gotta just be okay hanging out here. I think it's okay hanging out here. Yeah, it looks a little awkward. Yeah, I always look a little awkward. Well, pull it me look, up to full screen. It looks, I can't it looks it. cattywampus. It oh, is cattywampus. Right. There you go. There you go. Okay. So I got to do something to get it here. I got to figure that out. Yeah, plus you want it to, to sit out a ways from the shock so, mount a little so bit. Like that right there. Yeah. So now bang now the arm now again. Now it's hanging on the... Um, is that what you were banging that that you heard the uh, the springs go thwang? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my oh, desk. Okay. So it did it. I thought you were hitting the actual arm to get to make the no, spring no, go. No, I can, I can, I can do yeah, that. It's still not doing. Yeah, it's still not bad. So this is this is actually twanging the spring. Well, that I can hear. <laughs> yeah, but but before when you heard it before, oh no, I was just patting on my desk before. So this did it, and, and all. All it's doing right now is it's hanging on the mic switch. I'll have to figure out a better solution for this. Okay. Have it sit there. Yeah, and there are um, there are springs. What's a good camera? Yeah, there are springs Space. in this, but they are all hidden inside the inside yeah. here, so you don't really see them. I was gonna I was gonna go get some black um, pipe cleaners and put them in the springs because that would dampen the noise too. I still may do that. That's um, home redneck engineering one one. <laughs> All right. Well, have fun at your um, podcasters thing. Is it something we can watch or? Yeah, um, it's called the Podcasters Roundtable, and okay. um, can I can I get over here to my uh, my screen? This is not set up right. <coughs> Uh, 
Podcasters Roundtable. That is it. So just look for that, and it will be um, some YouTube. They don't do Facebook. They do YouTube. Um, they don't do Facebook. They, do they do audio stream or just YouTube? Just uh, as a live stream, it's just a YouTube. Um, I don't think that right. they do a live audio stream. Do they? But they save it. You can watch it after the fact. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And and then they put it out as a podcast. Oh, okay. I see. I see. So, That's wrong. That's yeah, wrong. They're going to be talking about equipment. You know, I, I uh, realized... Um, going back to bed. What's up? I realized that, that uh, they invited me to be on this, this roundtable, um, you know, for equipment. I think that's the one I'm looking at. This may be the previous one. I'm not sure. Um, and uh, I am not an equipment geek. I, I've, I've got some things I'm going to show them. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and I, and I will talk a little bit about the experience that we went through in you know picking a, a mixer for you, where I looked at a bunch of different options and decided the same mixer that I've got is what you need, just because of the capability of the ins and outs. Um, the next level down didn't really have what uh, what was going to work for you, um, so we picked that. Uh, but I would have been happy with something smaller, and and this is pretty cheap; it's two hundred bucks. Um, I would have been happy with something even cheaper, but it wasn't going to do what we wanted to do. So, um, we'll talk about specking something like that. And then I've got a few other gimmicks to show. Like when I put in this extra monitor here, yep. uh, I, did, I didn't have a video card that had enough room for all these monitors. So I've got this little thing, um, this, this tiny little card, you can sort of see it. Here, it plugs into a USB. Did you know all of your video comes out of your USB connector? What? Not all my video. Yeah. All the video from your computer all the, all is, a, is available to tap off at the USB connector. And so this is, uh, um, in fact, I've got to, oh, I'll just unplug it because I'm going to have, to, oh dear. <laughs> we killed it. The whole, the whole system got unhappy. So all the video, all the extra video you have is USB? Yeah, um, not all of it. Um, okay, boy, I shouldn't. I pulled the wrong one. So you got to take that. You also got to take that little, uh, the little sound deadening thing, the little thing that goes between the um, the mixer board and the thing that whistles if I if I take it off. Got to remember that. Yep, and I'll show cheap, I'll show one of those too. And the cheap mic. Bring the cheap mic. Yep. Because you want people to be buying the cheap mic. Because this sounds good enough, right? I sound all right. If I get it on top of it, it's, you know. Well, everybody knows the mic. If I get it on top of it, it sounds really sexy. Everybody knows the mic. I'm sorry. Could, I couldn't resist that. I have, the kids I have. love that. They're begging me to bring this mixer board to, to the race <laughs> for the PA system. If they had a smaller one of this that had that, I probably they probably do have a smaller one of this that that has it, right? I should look at that. Yeah, I've totally screwed up my computer by unplugging the wrong uh, the oh, wrong one. But do, do we yeah. ever stop Facebook? So, Is it still going? No, it's still going, and I can I can't get to it. <laughs> Wait, but, but you're got to get to it. What What are you seeing on Facebook? Uh, uh, on, on my output on Skype. I can see you. Oh, okay. um, I can see you. And on Facebook, it's live. Now it's the Podcasters Roundtable. Wait, we'll see if we can get to you there. I can talk you through hitting the button to stop. You got to <laughs> alt-tab alt -tab yourself into the... Um, well, see, I can't bring that up. I, I, the uh, the output from, from Wirecast covered up the Wirecast screen, and I can't make it go away. I'm trying to figure out how. So, so if you alt-tab on your keyboard, doesn't it... Um, yeah brings up the options, then you can pick the screen you want to see. Right, but there's something overlaying that screen and I can't make it go away and it's frozen. If, if you hit escape, it doesn't do anything? No. Um, can you see? This is... Oh, I see. There I am. So if I hang up, no, it's not going to do it because you're no, still connected. No, it's this screen over here. It's that screen. Oh. That screen over here, which has got my wirecast controls that has something sitting on top of it. And I plugged, oh, it, I plugged it back in, but it didn't, it didn't take. Uh-oh. So, so you're not going to be able to stop the recording. That means this episode is in the can, literally. Um, no, it'll it will 
It'll, it's not going to stop automatically. It's an OS moment. <laughs> now. Oh, boy. Now you pulled it all. <laughs> you got to get off to your meeting. We're going to be we're going to be Facebooking all night long here. Well, I've got to use this system to get there, so. Oh, you're you gonna right. Uh, you can unplug it all and carry wi it with you. Wirecast will, um, Wirecast will uh, survive a crashed closing. It'll it'll save it. Yeah. So that's what you got to do. Yeah, but uh, to have to figure it out, and I'll have to do it to everybody on Facebook Live because I can't make it go away. All right, seven three Facebook Live. I know one Thank way to make it go away: pull my Ethernet okay. connector. Uh. <laughs> That well, is that going to make the screen go away? It's not going to make the no, screen go away. No, that'll make Facebook go away. It'll make Facebook go it goes away. Because it goes out of Ethernet. Yeah, that'll stop the Facebook, but it still won't stop the, the Wirecast recording. But no, you think but, uh, but I'll be able, to, I'll be able to, to analyze that without um, doing it in front of the entire watching audience. No, we're enjoying this. you got to go, though. Yep. I'm enjoying it. I, I'm learning. So I'm not enjoying it, but I'm learning something. Yeah. Somebody says, do the tab control. I think we're already past that. Yep, tried that, didn't work. Yeah, Ethernet. Ethernet, goodbye. <laughs>